Hi everyone and welcome along. Today we're going to paint one of my favourite flowers, bluebells. So grab your paints and let's get started. The best thing about painting seasonal flowers is you are so much more likely to, to be able to find the real thing to actually study. Um, so I just popped down the lane at our house and we've got a few bluebells just on our drive so I picked one or two. Obviously picking wildflowers is um, not advisable but if they just happen to be in your garden or whatever then you are in luck or you can take the opportunity to go out on a nice walk and maybe just study some while they're growing. Anyway, so we've got these bluebells. These are called English bluebells because they curve over to the side. You also get Spanish bluebells that grow straight and have flowers either side. Um, so yeah, we've got some beautiful colours. Um, the purple is quite a blue colour, so well, hence bluebell. So we'll be mixing in some pinks with some of our blues. Um, now I'm going to pop this in a vase in front of me and then get painting. So I'm beginning to begin by paint, uh, drawing in a few lines. So I've done a little curve just here um, to create the, the neck of a little vase. And I'm just going to draw that in. I am going to be painting in quite a loose style today. So, and also, you know, I'm very much teaching you how to paint rather than how to draw. So the drawing elements of my pieces are very simple, very minimal, and you can already see that like, it's a little bit on the wonk anyway, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, so the important thing is that we've got the sort of the neck of the vase which tells us where our stems are going to go. So I'm just going to draw in uh, a few and then one like that and I'm just going to leave it at that for the pencil. Um, so let's mix up some colours. I've got my trusty ProArt Masterstroke brushes, the, the usual ones and of course now um, we've introduced a few new brushes into stock on my website um, and one of those today we're going to use which is the Rigger, the long slender brush which is perfect for painting really beautiful long thin lines. Um, I did a few videos just showcasing those brushes last week so head on to my, um, I've got one on the quick fix, one in illustration and uh, one in flowers and foliage so you can't miss them. Right so we're mixing up colours for our flowers. I've got French ultramarine blue here. I think cobalt blue deep as well is a really good colour for bluebells. So mixing in those colours as well. And then over here, I've got permanent rose. And I'm going to bring some of that over and just start to play around with introducing the pink to the blue. And just finding, if I grab one of the flowers here, finding the right colour. And I think we're going to get it. Yeah, I think cobalt blue deeps are really nice blue to bring in. Of course, you know, it's good to be finding a range of tones. Um, so I always recommend just having your sort of different colours at either end so that you can pick out the maybe a blue a bit, maybe a more pink bit, but that's really nice. So it's good to have your colours mixed ready. And then we're going to get started. Now, one of the things I love about bluebells is how the dye of the flowers seems to um, stretch along the stem itself. So you begin with a green stem coming upwards and then it sort of blends into a purpley blue colour. So I'm going to take my size 2 brush and I'm going to begin with quite a dilute green colour. I'm just going to start with this one in the begin in the front. So the stems aren't that slender. And that's really nice. What I'm going to do is clean off my brush a little bit and just drop in just a very dilute bit of the blue colour there. And now I'm going to take some of this bluey purpley colour and I'm actually going to find little branches coming off 
and you can elongate out the stem just a bit further if you want and if you wanted a clean wet brush you can just sort of blend that down in just a little bit to have it all just fitting in nicely together okay so now as I said it's going to be a sort of fairly loose approach I'm just going to use this is a size zero brush but using the side of it starting with that top curve bringing it down and I'm going to drop in just a little bit of blue towards the top so let's try again so I've got this brush angled quite low to the page coming down and just flicking it out at the side and then a bit more water on the brush I used to get a bit sort of het up about the curl the curling up of a bluebell flower and how to best do it but actually I've realized the best thing you can do is just try and use the lovely flick of the brush there and we'll drop in a little bit of bit more blue color I also really love that um, little bit of unpainted space you just get All right so we'll just get another one here so flick flick Another one which is going to blend into the others, but that's okay because we're painting in a slightly loose style. Okay, very nice. So we're just going to uh, continue on with our other stems. So I'm going to get my size 2 brush again and I'm going to paint this one here. So again, up comes the stem, or you could start at the top if you wanted but it's all down to you really. Um, I'm just going to overlap that one. Or you might want to do it like this, where you come from the top, come from the bottom and meet in the middle. That's fine too. Just remember that what you're wanting to do is drop in a little bit of color. Then a smaller brush, either the rigger could be, well, let's see, maybe I'll get four tenths in there, I think is what I used. That's almost a bit too thin, isn't it? It must have been the size zero. Here we go. That is the thing, like a lot of these brushes sometimes can be just a bit too small. Now, even though it does curl over to the side, you do get the odd flower that sort of grows upwards. A bit like that. Now you see this line here where the, the water hasn't quite blended, the colour hasn't quite blended. The clean wet brush you can just kind of smooth that down. Oh this feels very nice and relaxing I must say. Um, day of filming, it's actually my birthday today and um, I couldn't be more happy to be painting these lovely bluebells for you. So dropping in a bit of the blue colour on top of the pinky blue mix. Pinky blue, I guess that's what we would call purple, isn't it? I do actually have a like a PDF worksheet of bluebells if you're interested in painting them in a little bit more detail. Because I know we all like to watercolour in slightly different ways. Some people love the loose watercolour style we're doing today, some people prefer something just a little bit more detailed. So up here we'll have one. I'm starting from the base there, you could always do that if you wanted. Or if you prefer starting from the top and then flicking out at the bottom. I think that's probably the biggest challenge in this video is getting that little flick 
because they are interesting. They sort of really go really long and then flip down. And of course you'll get some like that that are just all blended in. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna paint in one last one and then we can do a little bit more uh, fun detail on it. At this point, you might want to mix up a bit more color. It's amazing how it goes down. Um, but also because we're going to need just a tiniest bit more concentration in the color. Okay. So um, this is dried and what I want to do, size two brush, is I think it's just maybe a bit fun to pop in an extra Uh, sort of panel down the middle I suppose just with a little kick curl one to one side or another so just flicking off the brush to one side you don't have to do it to every single one but just try and get the uh, little flick of a petal tip really sort of coming out the bottom there. Or if your petal's a bit slender, you could always sort of add one just off the side if you wanted. But if you look closely at, at bluebell flowers, they are sort of remarkably sort of uniform, they're very straight very sort of uh, sort of long slender and then just these tiny little flicks off the bottom and then you do also get extra little almost like sepals I suppose that come and sort of grow out the side and have a little bit of a a wiggle, which is kind of fun. So pop a few of those in there. Just helps add if you can find new details. And this all just comes from observing. And that's why I love if you can have the real thing in front of you. Now for the vase, I'm going to mix up a bit of burnt sienna and Payne's grey to make a nice shadowy grey. Just mix a tiny bit more of the blue tone of the Payne's grey and then maybe an actual bit of blue French ultramarine, really nice. You can play around with your shadow mixes with the brown and blue and get whatever you need really. Um, but I'm now adding water to make sure it's nice and dilute and I'm going to just try and sort of as loosely as possible create this vase shape so I'm looking for where the contours are. not just sort of filling it in as an outline, trying to get a bit of character to the vase. It's a, I've, I've sort of done a ceramic vase, so maybe we could pop a little bit more color in the base. the fun with these loose loose things though is they can just be sort of a bit expressive and um, I'm going to just flick the brush a little bit to get a little bit of a, a speckle on the ceramics there and um, quite enjoy that that's sort of flicking off to the sides a little bit. Let's get a slightly bit of darker colour. Just a little 
little bit of darkness in the bottom and in the sides. And there we go. A lovely loose watercolour vase of bluebells. Thanks so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed that one. I want to say a massive thank you to our patrons for their support because that support enables us to keep creating videos like these that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed this one then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you got on with it. And of course if you never want to miss another video then hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell and we'll see you again next time. Bye!